Well, hello there, everyone. So here's the question for you. Has your dog, cat, ever had their ear swell up like some sort of water balloon? It's squishy and you're like, what is going on here? It's soft. It's like a waterbed. What is it? Well, this is an oral hematoma. Hematomas are a buildup of bodily fluids, blood, all sorts of nastiness inside inside the body somewhere and when it happens in an ear the aural is re in reference to the ear the ear fills up and what do you do it's just just a big sack of liquid nasty liquid but liquid nevertheless so what do we do well we're going to talk about that today on cat chat with me i'm penny and today's topic is about oral hematomas or hematomata I run Mew Mew House, a retirement home and hospice for cats. Oral hematomas are near and dear to my heart since I just brought a cat home from treatment for an oral hematoma, and I've had several. They're not a whole lot of fun. So I'm going to talk about what they are and what you need to do about them. But before I get into that, I like to know who's watching, where you're watching from, Hashtag live if you're watching this live. Hashtag replay if you're watching it on replay. And you know, where are you? I'm here in western New York where tomorrow's December and it's currently pouring rain. Good times. And um, yeah, so there we are. Where are you at? All right. So let's talk about oral hematomas. Oral hematomas are, again, this, this buildup of, it'd be like if our outer ear, this is called a pinna, the outside of the ear, if it filled up with blood or other fluids, it'd be this massive balloon. So what causes it? Well, a lot of times what's causing the oral hematomas is shaking. You have dogs and cats that shake their heads. So shaking jostles things enough, and then a blood vessel ruptures, and then just fills it up. And that tiny space, you know, ears are thin, but there's skin on each side, and then there's a, a space in between, and that fills up with liquid. And again, usually related to shaking. Now, the shaking could be related to any number of things. It's often related to fleas or perhaps ear mites, which are super common, but could also be related to polyps in the ear, 
and could just be related to having dirty ears. So if you're, you've got a pet that has uh, an aural hematoma, or if you're worried that they'll have an aural hematoma, there are things that you need to do. Most importantly is you need to stay up to date on your flea meds, because fleas can cause animals to shake a lot, shake their heads. And especially if you have flea meds that take care of ear mites, all the better. Not all flea meds do. So you want to deal with ear mites and fleas to make sure that's not what's causing them to itch and shake their heads a lot. But also take some time to you know, flip the ear and look and see if the inside of the ear is crusty or, or wet or problems in there. Clean them out if you can. They'll let you. This is, you know, rain up there with things like trimming claws. It's something you need to just get an animal, your dog or your cat, used to you messing around with their ears. Because, you know, this isn't real good when somebody else is sticking their finger in your ear, but you've got to have them be comfortable and calm when that's going on. If their ears are crusty, are cleaners that you can use. Don't jam a Q-tip in your dog's ear. It's just like with humans, all right? You're going to hurt them. So, so don't. If, the, if it looks really crusty or it seems blocked, then you might want to take them to the vet. And also, you should be going to the vet regularly to have them have the vet look inside to make sure that they are clean and check for anything like polyps because they can have a little growth inside the ear canal, which can also be itchy and can cause them to shake their heads a lot. Now, hematomas happen, okay? So what do you do about it? And this is the, you want to do as much as you can to prevent them because they do happen. I mean, it could just say an ear injury, whatever. But when you've got, um, when this has happened already, it's too late. Okay. And this sort of build up a fluid, um, abscess or something in an animal, you don't want to just pop it and let it drain. Ears are especially problematic because they need to be able to hear out of them kind of nice um but you can't just pop it all right this requires a surgical correction and unfortunately it's it's you know in in terms of what the surgery is like it's not that bad they drain the abscess or they they drain the fluid and then it's fine but it isn't just put a band-aid on it and the cat goes home the problem with ears is that you know, the, all they are is layers of skin, a little bit of, of cartilage to give them support. So when they've puffed up with this hematoma, they lose all that structural support. So when you've drained a, a, an oral hematoma, you have to actually put some sort of support on it to keep it from just rumpling up as it heals. So unfortunately, this is the case with the cat that just came home. He's going to be wearing a cone for three weeks and has a piece of actually old x-ray film supporting his ear in the correct shape so that when it comes off, he has an ear-shaped ear. Otherwise, you get, like in humans, you know, you have the, the, the boxers who wind up with cauliflower ear. You know, it's all just messed up. The same thing. And with an, with an animal, especially with cats and, and dogs, too, um, they use their ears for communication, so we don't want them to have this rumpled ear. All right, so you have to support it, and it has to stay in this support for three weeks so that it'll actually hold its shape, and that means a cone, because otherwise they're going to scratch it, rub it on everything, and it's going to come apart. So, unfortunately, for your cat, if it's had an oral hematoma, you're looking at cone time for a little while, and cone time is no fun. I have, usually when my cats have to wear cones, I do take them, and I will remove the cones once in a while so that they can, you know, groom themselves a little bit, but, you know, I don't take off the cone and just let them wander the house, you know, I make sure they're not scratching at it or anything, and then the cone goes right back on, and they hate it, they hate it, they hate it, but it's better than having a rumpled up ear. Ears are super important for hearing and for communication, you don't want to get them messed up. So oral hematomas, not a whole lot of fun. Um, they can be extremely painful for your cats. So if if you see one in your cat or your dog, 
you need to deal with it right away. It's not just going to go away. It won't go away. You've got to take care of it. So it's just one of those things. Unfortunately, it can be pretty spendy to fix depending on your, your vet. But it is what it is. With my cats, the cat just went in. He also had to get blood work because we weren't sure where he was at. He's an old man, so we had to make sure that there were no underlying problems that would prevent him from being able to be anesthesia, anesthesia, which is a strangely hard word to say. So all these things come together. The best thing you can do is work on preventing oral hematomas, which means keeping their ears clean, making sure they have flea meds, and get them to the vet once in a while so make sure there's nothing else going on in their ears, and you're not likely to see them. I hope you found this interesting. If you like what you learned today, please go ahead and like and share. I'd love to know. Um, well, I'd like to see this information being spread far and wide, currently going live on Facebook, and, and hopefully it's actually going live on YouTube. Do you have a YouTube channel for all of this? And there's other information. I think I finally figured out how to make it work. And um, so if you like it, please feel free to share away. And if you're interested in supporting Mew Mew House's mission, Mew Mew House is now a nonprofit. Yay, go Mew Mew House. And we take in senior and hospice cats, special needs cats, give them a place to live for the rest of their lives where they're going get, to get the care and attention that they need. If you're interested in supporting that and learning more about it, Please go to mewmewhouse.org. I hope you all have a fantastic, wonderful, and lovely day. And I will see you next week. Bye now.